And if I knew that you will love me this way, Jesus Christ. I never knew. Emma. Oh, you have loved me this way. I say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Divine, this is how your love is. Thank you for the love you have for this, our ministers, our brethren, that you yourself brought them into this conference because you want them to know. You want them to increase. You want them to be blessed. You want to use them more. Fulfill that in their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. That which they don't know, teach them. Open their understanding that they might receive from you. That which is hidden away, I'm asking their ministries, their lives will be improved, will be increased in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. You can go and sit down. Now, we are considering. The Remember God's warning and awaiting judgment for corrupt ministers. Remember God's warning and awaiting judgment for corrupt ministers. In the morning, we consider, remember, God promises to bless true and holy ministers. We have heard of God's readiness, promises to bless true and holy ministers. Now, we will see the readiness of God also to judge corrupt ministers hence he gives the warning remember God's warning and awaiting judgment for corrupt ministers the scripture makes us to know that God is a God of judgment this nature of God was revealed from the beginning of the, the book of Genesis. It was revealed quite early in the creation, the judgment of God. In fact, it began with Adam. Then it went to Cain. God's judgment over Cain. Then it continued down the ages until it culminated in the destruction of the earth by water. To show you, God is a God of judgment. His judge, his love brought Adam and Eve to the garden of joy and perfection. His judgment removed Adam and Eve from that garden to the suffering world. That is it. That's it. love and judgment. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of judgment. Yes. So, so it is revealed right from the beginning. If you see the story of Cain and Abel, Look at it. Right from the beginning, as you see the mercy and love of God, judgment follows. For example, in Genesis chapter, chapter 3, before we come to the story of Cain and Abel, Genesis chapter 3, we want to read verse, let's see the decrees of God. Verse 16, unto the woman he said, 
I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over you. You are supposed to give birth without pain, in peace, but because you yielded to Satan and allowed Satan to come in to the family and allowed Satan to affect your husband and allowed Satan to cause your husband and yourself to disobey my command, you are going to be having pains in childbearing. A childbearing time shall be a sorrowful time to your life. Apart from all the sufferings of life before eating, apart from other sufferings that will follow, see the judgment. God gave. And what about to Adam, verse 17? And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For thus thou art and unto dust shall thou return. Can you see judgment? From the land of pleasure, you are going to go to the land of thorns and thistles. From eating and rejoicing without any service, without any suffering, you are now going to face suffering before you get to eat. Life shall not be easy with you. In the sweat of your face, you shall eat. So, See the judgment that he gave to Adam. Yes. Even what about the serpent that came to the garden? Verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat. All the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Can you see? Everyone the judgment. I shall give everyone according as his ways shall be. This is God. The Lord is a God of judgment. His ways are full of judgment. From judging Adam and Eve, judging the serpent, he was moving forward. Judgment continues. Even to the life of Cain. Yeah, judgment continues. Look at it. In chapter 4 of Genesis, the Lord gave Cain warning. Before the judgment, there was the warning that he gave unto Cain. In chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth. And his countenance fell. What did Abel do to you? Abel is not concerned. Abel received the message of the gospel. 
that blood has to be shed for sin committed. And therefore, he brought of one of the flock so that the blood of that kettle or that cow or that lamb should be shed for, him, for his sins. And you, the Lord showed you quite clear example. Your parents told you this very clearly, but you went to be bringing yam. You went to be bringing rice that doesn't have blood. You went to be bringing things that don't have blood, the crop, and brought to God. That's an abuse. And that's how God rejected it. Then why are you angry with your brother? Why are you angry? And when he was angry, verse 6, and the Lord said unto Cain, Where art thou wrath? And where is thy countenance fallen? Are you not supposed to know your fault and know where you fell so that you can do the correct thing and be blessed? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? Am I making choice? As some people say, some have been chosen to death. Some have been chosen to lie. No, nothing like that. Even you Cain, that I rejected your offering. If you do what is well, should you not have been accepted? But he said, And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. You have the power to overcome sin that wants to overtake you now. Satan is already making suggestions, but if you can master it, it will be well with you. God never sold you to Satan. Let you never think that God sold you to Satan. Because there's a thief that says, if that is what God has destined for me, I can't change it. God has not destined you to be a thief. God has not destined you to be a wizard. God has not destined you to be a witch. God has not destined you to be an immoral man. God has not destined you to be a failure. That's what he's telling the, the first child. The first child of man born into this world. If you do evil, my hands are not there. My hands are not there. It's not because I have destined you to destruction. Change that thought that Satan gave you. That's why you're relaxing in evil. You say, I will do it until I die. Because that's what God has destined me. Oh, I, there's no way I can be delivered. If you follow the course, you will. If you follow the principle, you will be delivered. That's why he's told Cain, now, sin wants to master over you. But if you do well, you will master over it. Yes. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. He couldn't master it. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up again against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Satan had taken him over. He never mastered it. God told him you can overcome that temptation. So when any man sin, let him not say he is tempted of God. For God is not tempted of evil. Neither tempts he any man. Don't say it's God that made you to commit fornication. Don't say it's God that made them to initiate you. Don't say God is the one that made you to fail. God is not an evil man. That thought of evil is not in his heart. It's, it's a lower thought. It comes from a lower being. It can, it's not in the perfect creator whose ways are perfect. Now, Cain has done it. See, patient God has come again to talk to Cain. He said, and the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother and he said I know not am I my brother's keeper this is a higher rebellion where did he not fall down and say oh Lord the devil just as his father and mother said Satan tempted us why did he not go die the devil tempted me but he was really rebellious hmm. and God said I would begin judgment upon you. I've done it for your father and mother, but you, I'm going to deposit my judgment upon you. Verse 10, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood 
crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. A wanderer, useless person, you will be from place to place. Vagabond, useless. Hey, and Cain understood the weight of the judgment, but some of you will not understand yet until you enter hell. Until you enter hell, then you will understand the weight of divine judgment for breaking the law of God and being rebellious at him. Yes. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear, is greater than the sin I commit, the God of judgment. And so, that is how judgment continued. To chapter 6, verse 5, the Bible says, And God saw that the wickedness of man, on, was, of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. It repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For he repented me that I have met them. I will destroy man. Is God of judgment. Is God of mercy. The God of mercy is the God of judgment. He that has been showing you mercy will destroy you. He that has been showing you love will turn again and destroy you. See how beautiful the electric light is to us. See how wonderful the electric cable is doing for us. See how wonderful the generator is doing, is giving us light. But if you touch the life wire, you will see how terrible it is. For many have died by the life wire. As beautiful as the light is, don't go to the life wire. As beautiful as God is, don't go to the other side of God. The judgment side. He will never spare you. He will never spare you. When Jesus carried the sin of the world on the cross, he never spared him. Darkness fell upon the earth. He turned his eyes away. It was terrible on Jesus. And he cried out. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It was terrible. Brother, you can be forsaken, if not already forsaken. My sister, you can be forsaken, if not already forsaken. I'm telling you, that's the nature of God. Saul on the throne, but the Spirit of God has left him. Waiting for him, him to die and go to hell. That's God. That's his nature. The one that gave us the right hand and also the left. The right foot and also the left is the God of judgment. He has law. He has judgment. Mercy and truth meet together. Love and judgment go together. If you are on love, receive it abundantly. If you fell to judgment, receive it abundantly. That's the nature of God. He said, I would destroy man which I have made. In verse 13 of Genesis 6. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. I will destroy man with the earth. And the Lord brought water upon it and cleared out every man. Every man gone. Every man. A time is going to come. Every man on this earth shall be gone. All of them. Now he is dealing one by one because he's a God of wisdom. He's dealing one by one. 
then he shall deal with all. So, don't think that, <laughs> let's go. You will see this God. From the beginning, he revealed himself as a God of judgment. The devil, Satan himself, was judged. He was created perfect. Look at it, Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12 to 19. The Bible tells us here about God's judgment upon Satan. Ezekiel 28, verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, a representation of Satan. Thou seest the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You are the summary of all I made. I sum up all things in you. Beauty was perfected in you. Wisdom was perfected in you. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond. The burial, the onyx, and the jasper. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of the tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee. In the day that thou was created, you were created musical. You were created to give joy to heaven. Yes, I, I build this music into your life. Thou art anointed cherub that cover it, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mount of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways. From the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. I made you perfect. I didn't make you to become Satan. I made you perfect. But iniquity was found in thee. The garden of Eden. Man was made perfect. The woman was made perfect until iniquity was found in them. He cast them out of the garden. So Satan also was made perfect. But it shows us when angels in heaven were created. After a period of time. I mean, when they were created, they must have been created with a condition like that of man. That don't do this. If you do this, this shall be the result. And they maintain themselves. But as man was tempted, Satan went to the wrong side. Satan went to the wrong side. So, as he went to the wrong side and did something which is similar to that of the man in the Garden of Eden, that's why he came to man and said, is there a commandment? Because God has a com had a commandment for them in heaven. Is there a commandment of God? He missed that commandment. He rebelled against that commandment. And the Lord, iniquity was found in him. All the other angels had their free will then. And he politicized them. And they yielded to him because of his beauty. And because of the musical nature he was made. And because of the wisdom, he used his wisdom over them and God them. And then thought he will overcome God. Thought. But what did he say? In the book of, hold this place, we're coming back there. In the book of Isaiah, I read chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14 from verse 12. The Bible tells us what Satan said. At that time of liberty, free will, which the angels had in heaven, at that time, he saw the simplicity of God. He saw the love of God. He saw the ordinariness of God. He saw the friendship of God, friendliness of God. He thought he had studied everything about, about God and could be as God himself. That's what he said in Isaiah 14, I read verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. 
I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, above the angels of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sights of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Can you see? At the period of liberty, at the period of free will given to angels, Satan came, this thought came to him until iniquity was found in thee. So, what was the word of God? Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit, the God that loved him so much, the God that summed up perfection in him, the God that built beauty, built joy into him by the musics he put within him, that God became the God of judgment over Satan. You will be cast to hell. Yes. Thou shall be brought down to hell to the side of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider the saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That did shake kingdoms? That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof? That opened not the house of his prisoners? Now, go back to Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden. Yes, verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub. Yes, verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee by the multitude of thy merchandise. They have filled the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shall be a terror as he is to us now. And never shall thou be any more. You end in the lake of fire. That's the end. That's God. Precious boy. Precious girl. Go into sin and see how, how God will turn himself against you. Judgment will follow you. Precious man, how precious you are. As precious as Jesus was, as a man, he said, my father loves me because I do always those things that please him. And he, at, on the cross, when he carried the sin of man, my father turned away from me. And I cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The Lord will forsake you. The Lord will deny you. He will say, I never knew you. With all these testimonies you're given because of your iniquity, because you're taking God for granted. You are taking God for granted because He's cheerful, He's giving, he's speaking to you. He, 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 you're happy, He promotes you, He gives testimonies to others because, for you. And you say, Hey, wonderful, my God loves me. He's, protect, he's promoting me among people. Go and commit sin, turn away from Him. He would turn away from you. Deny him. He would deny you. That is God. The God of love will turn to the God of judgment. See what he has done to Satan. Covering cherub. Son of the morning. You are gone. Never shall thou be anymore. The greatest creature of God. In heaven. Among the angels. Fell and disappeared from heaven. Never to be appear before God anymore. Forever. In her, in the lake of fire. But today is a terror. Is our problem. Is a terror upon the earth. Moving up and down. Don't allow him to touch you. Don't allow him to have conversation with you. Don't be careless when he comes across you. In you, the ways you speak. Because he can contaminate you. As he did to Eve. 
He can get you out from the presence of God to, do, to be doomed together with him. That's the God of judgment. The, sons, the two sons of Eli, the two sons of Eli, of Aaron rather, the two sons of Aaron, look at judgment that fell upon them in the book of Leviticus chapter 10 to tell you this God you're enjoying, hey, this God that even appears to you in dream, in vision, takes you to heaven to see his pleasure, takes you to hell, to hell moves around with you, uh, you are happy when you pray, say, yes, here am I. Be careful with him. Be careful with him. Hmm. Because if you turn away, you, you will wonder at him. Yes, Leviticus chapter 10, I read from verse 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them, his cinder, and put fire therein. Where did you get your fire from? The Lord instructed, fire should be taken from the altar. But where did you get this fire from? And put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. The Lord, you are doing your own. In the ministry, what is not commanded you is what you are doing. What the leader of the movement, of the of the church has not commanded is what you are doing. That's a strange ministry. What you are doing there, you say you have the liberty, but it's a strange ministry. You are bringing things that we don't know. You are bringing things we have not learned it. Now, see it. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them. And they died before the Lord. You all, you have not died. But the fire is waiting for you. Where did you deviate? Who taught you those strange things you brought into holiness revival movement? Where did you see them? Because we are not there, our God is there. The God that gave us the commandment is there. He knows how you have turned off. You are not doing your will. He has, this fire will come on you certainly. Because he's the God of judgment. This fire will gush out from his presence and consume you. This fire, it may not be only fire, other things might already, may already be working on you because of your stubbornness, because of your self-dependence, because you feel you know, you know it, because you feel you cannot submit to the leadership. You won't play the messages we say you should play. You think you can preach. So you can't play this message for the people. You will not do things the way you are ordered to do them. Even the Bible study, you are not there to order it and allow the church of God to be dying because you are not there to control them. You are not there to see it. You are offering a strange fire. That's a strange ministry. It's not the ministry the Lord gave you. You will be judged for it. You are doing things outside the prescribed principle, scriptural principle. You will be judged for it. Though hands join in hands, the wicked shall not go unpunished. Because he's a God of judgment. Is it not by love he chose you? And now you're doing those things by yourself, no more by God. He would face his, the, the other side of God. The judgment side. You will face it. You will suffer it. You are killing his church with strange ministry. Doing the imagination of your heart. Not what you have been taught. And the Lord told Moses, see that you do all things according to the pattern I revealed to you in the mount. See, you do all things according to the pattern that I showed you in the mount. How do we show you the pattern? And you go and do your own thing. And say you are a minister. So I want you to know, because you don't know the judgment of this God. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember the judgment of Miriam? Miriam, a sister to Moses, elder sister to Moses, that forgot that the work of God is not dealing with relationship, blood relationship. What we're dealing with is the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ, which is superior to the blood of human beings. 
And when we are in ministry together, brother, sister, please, the one the Lord raised up is the senior among you that demands your respect and reverence with shaking. But let Miriam go and do something contrary to despise Moses. I say it's my younger brother. Younger brother. Younger brother. Do you go to heaven by age? Or you go to heaven by grace and by the choice of God? By, by the yieldedness of your life to God? Look at it in the book of Numbers chapter 12. I read verse 1. From verse 1. All through. Yes. Yeah, to see the judgment of God that came upon Miriam because he did evil against the Lord. To, to verse 14. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses by the, because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they say, had they lost in this spoken only by Moses? Had he not spoken also by us and the Lord heard it. Hmm. This murmuring that you are murmuring against the man of God, against the woman of God, God has had it. I'm telling you, God has had it. I don't know what you will do now. God has had it. A, a bad friend brought this bad story to you. Against the anointed of God. And you talk and laugh. The Lord saw you. He, he video covered you. Angel went and video covered you. You will know that the God is, this God is a God of judgment. You will know. Maybe some things have started happening to you already. Maybe. Because before Moses and Aaron will know anything, fire had broken already amidst Israel. People had started dying because of the judgment of God. Until they were done for. So my brother. And the Lord had it. Now. The man Moses was very meek. Above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. God knew this. They didn't know. Carnal men. Who are boasting of. Are we not prophets also? Are you prophets of the same level? Are you prophets of the same calling? Are you doing the same work before the Lord? Did the Lord create you for that? And the Lord spake on, suddenly unto Moses and said unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth and he said, Hear now! My words, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. But my servant Moses is not so. It's more than a prophet who is faithful in all my house. It's above you. He's a prophet, yes. It's above all of you. Faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. Even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Why were you not afraid to go and see your father's nakedness? Why were you not afraid to be looking at your mother's nakedness? Can a common person who has sins go to see her mother's nakedness when she's lying and her cloth is removed? A common son? Can a common child, daughter, go to see her father's nakedness? Can you? Why are you not afraid to speak against my son Moses? My servant Moses. Should you not be shivering? Should you not fear? So you mean you can speak against Jesus? Yes. Your nature of heart does not respect God. That's why you go to speak against his servant. Ah. Judgment will follow. 
judgment will follow. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. And he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous. White as snow. Who told you that God doesn't judge? This God served him with fear. Serve God with fear. Serve God with fear. You eat God's money and you're not afraid. <laughs> you carry woman to the house of God and commit adultery. You're not afraid. You will fear. When the Lord arises in judgment, your bones shall separate from each other. Yes. When the Lord shall arise in judgment against you. Ha! Huh. Don't you fear God? I don't know how the hell of the thief that was crucified in the left hand side of Jesus was. Who mocked him before he went to hell? His hell was another department. His hell was another department. The Lord, the Tinomic man, he knows how to handle the stubborn man. He knows how to handle the stubborn man. That is what the Lord said. Leprosy came upon Miriam. And it delayed the journey until they pleaded for her. So I'm talking about the judgment of God. Yes. The judgment of God. What do you say about Eli? The judgment that came upon Eli and his sons for their sins. First Samuel chapter 2. Already some of you, the judgment is already to start tonight or tomorrow. Already some of you, even the judgment of death is determined for, upon you. Thank God the love of God is speaking today. It goes to say, First Samuel chapter 2. I want to read verse 29 and 30. The Bible says, Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering which I have commanded in my habitation and honorest thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel my people mm. you have a wife all the offerings of God that you bring home she can pick anything from it you want to touch her? Oh. That's how you keep quiet. Two of you are going. Two of you are going. You say, I don't know what to do with her. I don't know what to do with her. The Lord knows how to do with you and her. Judgment. The Lord will deal with you and deal with her. He's a God of judgment. I'm telling you. So know the other side of God. You are bringing money home. The money of God. And your children are stealing it. Your children are taking it away. And you are busy hiding. Hey, I don't know how this money will go. The Holy Ghost said it is your children. The Holy Spirit told you, you have never taken them seriously. You have never taken your wife seriously. Or maybe you are a woman. It's your husband carrying that money. Say, hey, it's my husband. Why don't you go and say, I can't keep this money of the Lord. Why did you not say, Please, I will not bring this money of the Lord here because I have demons in my house. Why didn't you say so? You are bringing the money and they are carrying it. Buying rice and stew, very plenty for you. You are eating. Money of God. You love. You are bringing new one. The Lord said you are fattening yourself for the day of slaughter. For the day of judgment that will come not only upon you but upon your children, upon yourself. Because of Lack of the fear of God. That because of the disdain your children are having over the name of the Lord. In chapter 3, verse 11 to 13. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 11 to 13. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that hear it, it shall tingle. Their ears will stand up. 
Some things happen to some of these our people. Some of these our leaders. You begin to wonder. Why are you wondering? They have been covering iniquity. They are into serious iniquity. And the Lord promised, I will do a thing that all that hear, will, their ears will stand up. The Tino promised that he was going to remove witches. Did not the Lord say, I, if they don't repent, I would disgrace them. Did he not say so? So when this disgrace came upon these women, you didn't know it's from scripture? It's from divine promise? Everybody say, eh, 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 like thoughts crying out of water. Yes, the Lord did it. The Lord did it. I will do a thing. That when Israel shall hear, their ears shall tingle. The Lord will do a thing over your life. That when people shall hear of it, their ears shall shake. Their hearts shall quake. Because they will never think that a man so loved by God like you. They will never think that a man that has so pretended deeply like you could face this, this judgment of God. That's it. That is what he did. That is what he did. For verse 13. He said, in verse 12 rather, in that day, I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knew it. Because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained, restrained them not. Therefore, I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice, nor offering forever. This is God. Be busy defending yourselves. Be busy pro pro covering your sins. When your sins are revealed, it's mercy. So that judgment should not come. It's mercy. But you're busy covering them. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. She that covereth her sins shall not prosper. When your sin was revealed, when you were told that you were a witch, it is for your salvation and the mercy of God before you perish everlasting. But you cover it. No, 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 no. For your doom. Where will you find mercy? Mercy also comes when the truth is spoken. That's when you find mercy. And God showed you mercy. How many witches have died and nobody talked about them? And their sins went to meet them after death. Their sins followed after. Doomed forever. And they're busy crying there. God, why didn't you send somebody to accuse me? God, why didn't you send somebody to talk to me? But you, still alive. God sent people to tell you. Revelations are coming on you. No, for your doom. For your doom. And you defending your wife. <laughs> defending your husband. So that the two of you should die together. He is the God of judgment. Don't say he's answering your prayers. That's what I'm saying. That's the word of God. What happened to Eli? The word of God was fulfilled. In, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 4. Verse 14 to 18. The Bible says, And when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, What meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the man came in hastily and told him, Now, and told Eli. Now, Eli was 98 years old, and his eyes were dim that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What is there done, my son? And he, the, the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines. And there had been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. 
and the ark of God is taken and it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that he fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck break and he died you will die the Lord wants you you will die he's a God of judgment you will die because you have hardened yourself and the creator said is it not the same God that dealt with Cain is it not the same God that dealt with Eli you cannot do righteousness you can't be bold to stand to challenge iniquity you can't be bold to stand rather you compromise three people died in the same day added to the wife of the other four added to those people who died in the war of their own because the Lord says so. He is a God of judgment. He is a God of judgment. He is a God of judgment. The God of love is the God of judgment. The God of mercy, He goes with truth. He goes with truth. Yeah, He goes with truth. That's the law. Remember the son of the prophet that went to Samaria to King Jeroboam. What happened to him? The Lord told him, don't eat in that place. Don't come the same way you went. Take another way. He disobeyed. He disobeyed. Because he yielded himself to an old prophet who came purposely to destroy him and told him lies. The false prophet, false told him lie. Didn't the spirit of God in that son of the prophet signify to him, you are hearing a liar? Does the word of God change? But the appetite of the body, you, is appetite that will destroy you. You love eating dentists, special thing. The money of God is going for the food of your family. Your wife, terrible woman, is saying, give me meat. I've eaten enough uh, leaves, meat. She didn't know that leaves are the, are the best things that you need. I've eaten enough leaves. You must give me. Okay, I won't give you my body until you buy food, buy special meat, buy me this, buy me this, buy me this. You say, okay, God, you understand. He understands that he will judge you. He understands that he will judge you for misusing his money. They give you salary and you will go and get extra money. From where? Whose permission? Did God give you? Did your leader give you? Where are you taking that extra money? It's a holy money. Where are you taking it? It's a holy money. It's not your salary. You didn't take permission. He that does not come through the, way, the door and clamber through the window, the same is a thief. You didn't follow the normal channel to get that money. You got it because it you are, is, my, is, is in my hand and it is in my hand, it is in your hand. That hand will be burned with fire. That's God. Fear him. Fear him. Fear him. I'm telling you. That's the word of God. A lion slew that man on the way. A lion slew that man. Does not God have mercy? Did he not do good works? We shall hear about this, your good works. To tell you the nature of God. Yes. Now, I talk to you about the nature of God's judgment. God is patient. As I talk now, you are shaking that, oh, he will judge me now, he will judge me now. He may not. Because he is more ready to save than to condemn. That's even one of the reasons he prolonged your life. Accidents have happened to take you off. Evil men have done all, including poisoning for you to die. Witches and wizards have held meeting over you, even hired a strike man over you that sat at the door of your house, shooting all he could shoot. Nothing happened to you. It's the mercy of God. I'm going to give him more chance. For genuine repentance. The mercy of God. That's why he kept quiet. 
He is patient. Look at it in the book of Psalm. Psalm 50. Yes. Psalm 50. I read from verse 16 to 22. The Bible tells us here. Verse 16 to 22 of Psalm 50. But unto the wicked, God said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction, and casted my ways behind thee. When thou sowest a thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue framed deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee, and set them in order before, my, before thine eyes. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. He said, you do all this evil. I am patient. I didn't say anything. <laughs> You went and committed immorality with a woman and came back to the, to the church. You are the pastor. I said, okay, brothers, God is among us. Yes, in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Now let's open to the book of John. Hey, the Lord would have smitten that terrible evil man there. But I said, be patient. Man is like that. If I'm hor- if I'm if I rush in judgment, I will kill every one of them. That's why you are still there. And you thought that immorality means nothing before God. You thought lesbianism means nothing before God. Maybe you thought that God didn't see you. You thought homosexuality means nothing before God. Maybe you thought God didn't see you. Or you thought the sin of God's children is treated with mercy more than the sin of sinners. As said in the Catholic Church, if a, cat, if a pope sleeps with a lady, that is a holy action. But they know that lady accepts herself that any person who is not a pope should sleep with her. Or um, a priest. Who is not a priest? A reverend father should sleep with her. Because that one is where the sin is. <laughs> you are thinking like that. You're thinking like that. That your sin will be excused. Mm-mm. He's keeping quiet. Because man has been like that. Man has been like that. If he does not keep quiet in wisdom, he would destroy all of them. If he destroyed Saul of Tarsus, he couldn't have had Paul, the apostle. Because sometimes such people come to change. They come to realize their ways. And when they confess their sins, others learn from there. That's when wisdom allowed them. It's wisdom that allowed you, but for a time. That's why he said, you did all this and then I kept quiet. You think I am like you. No. When the time I set for you, when your cup is full, which time you don't know, I will put things in, in order in your eyes. Judgment will overtake you. You will cry, I will not bother. But now, I allow you to do what you're doing. I'm watching you. My angels are keeping record. That's what God is saying. Nature of God's judgment. A patient God. When God rises up in judgment, he will forget your righteousness. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 13. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 13. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trust to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousnesses, shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he had committed, he shall die for it. That's what God says. Go into sin. Or, listen, look at me here. If I go into sin, hey, 
all I have labored concerning, including all my evangelistic tour, all my labor to build a camp for Jesus, all the money I have given out for Jesus will never be remembered. That's God. But for the iniquity that you have done, you will be judged. For the iniquity. Then what do you have to boast? What's your boasting then? What are you boasting over to present to God? God, you know, I committed sin, but you know I have tried. Don't you know all I have done for you in your house? What will you point to? Nothing. Is it not even the one that gave you grace? The dead did what in the house of God? The Muslims did what in the house of God? Is it not destruction? It's the grace of God that kept you, gave, opened that door for you, that you had a chance to do anything for him. So why are you boasting about? If you had given grace, even to the least, the least person, he would do more than you. So why is your boasting? Go and commit sin. Everything you have done for God shall be forgotten. But your judgment will be sure. Straight to hell. Straight. Where did Eli go to? Straight to hell. With all his 40 years of judging Israel, straight to hell. That is it. His children made themselves vile. And he didn't restrain them. He was busy eating what they were bringing. And was getting fat. That's what the Lord said of him. My brethren, serve the Lord with fear. Serve the Lord with fear. Tremble before him. You may not be seen tomorrow. Be careful. Nature of God's judgment. He will stop his good promises on the righteous who go away into evil. The great promises. You dream it. You dreamed you saw this. Or a prophet came to you and said, this is what the Lord said I should tell you. Oh, there is signification in your spirit that this good is coming on you. That the Lord is going to do this. Go to sin. Go into sin and see whether you will see anything. Look at it in the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 18 verse 9 and 10. Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 9 and 10. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Can you see what the Lord is saying? I will repent of the good. Wherewith I said I would benefit them. I knew Abraham. I made promises for Abraham. But there's something I know Abraham will do to care for his family. So that that which I promise will come. God, what do you mean? What if Abraham doesn't care for his family? What if he is careless? My promises shall not be fulfilled. All promises are conditional that have made to man. It is as man continues with me, then I would continue with him. Am I a God that is near? Am I not also a God that is far off? Far be it. Did I promise your father's house that I was going to do this, do this, do this to you? And that I was going to establish your priesthood forever? He told Eli, far be it for me. He that honors me, I will honor. But he that dishonors me, me, I will dishonor. Brother, be careful. Be very sensitive in this matter of righteousness. This matter of godliness. This matter of eternal life. That's God. He made the promise. It's still conditional. You may not see condition there, but go to the other part. No scripture is of private interpretation. It has a made somewhere to make it clear. Go to the other side. It will tell you. He has condition. He has condition. The, the promises that are, are unconditional are, the, are those that rest upon God. I will do it. 
Like the coming again. Jesus is coming again. <laughs> that one does not rest upon us. He will come. Whatever we do, whether we like it or not, he will come. He has promised it. But that is not conditional. So there are promises that are not conditional. But there are promises that are conditional. So be careful. Who, you who want to be blessed by God. You who are praying to God to bless your life. You who are asking for healing. Asking for deliverance. You are asking for promotion. You are asking for new things. You are asking God, 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 make sure you are keeping your part. God is not a respecter of persons. We wish God would do this for you, but it's not in our power. It's between you and God. How you manage God is how he will manage you. That is it. The way of God. He will withdraw his judgment has no respect of persons. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. It goes. But as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons, Judge it according to every man's walk. Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Pass the time of your living in this world in fear. You may be rejected. You may be rejected. Be careful. You remember the story? That our beloved sister who is late now, who went to see reality because she didn't die in the Lord, Ladi Incan was Taken to the offshore of heaven, she saw a man at the gate who had labored for God. On earth, he was to enter heaven. Satan came at that gate and shouted, Stop! And the Lord was there, but that was not inside heaven. It's at the gate. Anybody can come to our gate. And the man stopped. Why are you asking me to stop? He said, This heaven, I missed it. Can you go there with your sin? The man said, which sin? He said, bring out your pocket. Take your hand into your pocket and draw out your pocket. He drew it out. In his white garment, there were spots there. Black stain. The black stain was the little, little money he was stealing in the house of God. Maybe he didn't consider them that they were thieves. He was a thief. He didn't ask counsel. Why are you not asking counsel? You do as you want. Are you afraid at all? Do you fear God? Do you fear hell? Why are you so careless that you're not asking counsel? You go on your own. If the man had asked for counsel, they would have told him, no, don't do that. No, don't do that. A brother called me. I want my son to read medicine. He had been from year to year struggling on this. But his points have not reached that level according to the university. Now, if somebody has told me that there is a man that the university has given him a number of people to admit. Just they honor him and has given him a number of people to admit. So whoever he brings in, the university will automatically take. And this man is saying he should bring 500,000 naira. He couldn't tell. Is, will he, is it okay? Since I'm not giving the school directly, I'm not bribing anybody there. It is another man. It's just to sell. The man is selling the admission. If I give it, it's anything... I said it is something. It is the same thing you will do to the academic secretary of that school. It is the same thing you will do to admission officer in that school before your son gets the admission paper. It's the same. And that will make your son read a course God didn't give him. Foundation out of course. Oh, ah, the matter is settled. I have understood it. But you, you are even an overseer. You go ahead of your own. You are not afraid that you will go to hell. You don't ask counsel. I'm an overseer. Who told you overseer has learned all? 
Who told you that overseer? Did you go to school? How many books have you read? How many times have you read the Bible through and through? Have you fasted 40 days? Then what makes you bust, even if you do all these things? That you cannot ask counsel. You're not afraid. You're running your house without seeking counsel. You're running the church without seeking counsel. You want to die? That's the world. So that's it, my brother. God has no respect of persons in judgment. He doesn't. Does it respect the number of years you have spent with him? The number of whatever. His judgment is systematic. The judgment of God is systematic. Does he really want you to perish? He just wants you to come to your senses and stop that evil. In Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. I read verse 14. The Bible says, from verse 14 to 24, And if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul uphold my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my commandments, I will also dis- do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ark that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart and ye shall sow your seed in vain for your enemies shall eat it and I will set my face against you and ye shall be slain before your enemies they that hate you shall reign over you and ye shall flee when none persuade you and I do all this to bring you back to myself Verse 18. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. And I will break the pride of your power. And I will make your heaven as iron and your head as brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield her increase. Neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And if ye walk contrary to me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. He's growing up gradually, like the steps you climb to a house. Small, 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 and end you with everlasting hell. Has not God started? Are you responding? Are you sensitive to the ways of God? Are you sensitive to the things that are happening? What, how are your dreams like? You're always thinking of Satan. This one, did the Lord say Satan will do it? He said, I will. I will. I will. Have you checked your life and seen no sin? And seen no rebellion? That's why you're saying it is from Satan? Have you checked it out? Because if you're stubborn, you, it's like the aeroplane going up. So, more evil will be happening to you. More evil until you balance to everlasting hell. That's God's way with systematic judgment. Yes. God expects the family and the church to be disciplinary. This is where many fell. This is where many families fell. This is where many churches fell. No discipline. A child left to himself shall bring shame to the mother and bring shame to the father. Is left to himself. No, 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 no. I cannot beat my children. No, 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 no. You're a mother that causes shame. Your children will cause shame in your life. Because, no, no, you can't beat your children. Ah, that's a person that shall be ashamed tomorrow. Because God says so. Because it, God put fear in the cane in children's heart. Ye shall cast out the evil from the child by the cane. Beat him with child, with cane, and don't pity for his life. He will not die. He will not die. Even if he leaves stripes on his body, they will heal up. But one thing is, he will repent. That's it. In the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 18, the Bible tells you what to do. Do it. Proverbs. Chapter 18, verse 
19. The scripture says, yeah, do what the Bible tells you to do. You will have the result. 1918. Chasing thy son while there is hope. Hey. And let not thy soul spare for his crying. While there is hope, it's when they still tender. Discipline him. But when the boy is 18 years, that one is fight. It's no more discipline. You are coming to deal with a child grown up. That one is fight. Whoever is stronger can fell his fellow down. It's no more discipline. Wow, it's late. That one now is negotiation. <laughs> it is applying wisdom now. You can't transplant that type of crop. You can't. It will spoil. But do it when it is young. Bring them up in the admonition of the Lord. Correction in Christ. Even the adult ones. Correct them in Christ. God expects that. There should be discipline. Yes. He expects the church to discipline the erring member or leader. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 20 and 21. Church, discipline the erring ones. Even those who are leaders. First Timothy Chapter 5, yes, verse 20 and 21. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels, that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. Listen, them that sin. Did you not sin? Why are you avoiding rebuke? Did you not sin? Why are you avoiding discipline? Did you not sin? Why are you angry when you are rebuked? Did you not sin? Why are you angry when you are disciplined? Come. Do you know that you are adding sin to sin? For avoiding rebuke? For avoiding discipline? Do you know that you are adding sin to sin? When you challenge the leaders, we get angry with them. Why did you talk? You, you, don't, you are talking in the public without respect of persons. Without respect of persons. It can be talked in public. That which is done publicly can be done publicly. Whichever way the Lord decides it, yours is show me mercy. Show me mercy. Oh God, show me mercy. You who have hidden your sin, do you really want to go to heaven? You are an overseer, I know. But you hid your sin. I, that's why you are just walking. You don't know the direction you are going. You are beating the air. You are not walking for heaven. You will reveal your hidden sin by yourself. You will reveal your hidden sin by yourself. You will reveal your hidden sin by yourself. The Holy Ghost is saying, go forward. What is shame? Jesus despised the shame because of the glory that shall follow. He despised the shame. Despised that shame. That shame is the voice of Satan. That shame is the voice of Satan. Satan double cross you. And for you to have salvation from him, he brought shame on you. Don't take it. Go and expose yourself. Otherwise, when you are in hell, you will regret a billion times. Nay, a trillion times. You say, how many hours will it have taken me? Even if I'm to be disciplined, how many weeks, how many days? You will call yourself a fool that rejects the mercy of God. Damn the sin. Then why are you not disciplining your members? Why are you not disciplining your, your leaders? Why are you favoring some? Why are you respecting persons? You are not doing the will of God as a minister. You are spoiling the church. Meaning Satan can enter into that one man and through him spoil the whole lump. A little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. A little leaven. 
leaven it the whole long. Do what God says, you will have God's result. Do what God commands, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Go and do it in your chapter. Go and do it in your unit. Go and do it in your zone. Go and do it in your nation. Go and do it in your region. Go and do it everywhere. As a faithful minister, faithful, faithful, too lazy, too weak, too sympathetic to go to heaven. You are too lazy. You are too weak. You are too sympathetic to have a mansion in heaven. You are more sympathetic than God. You are more sympathetic. You love people more than God loves them. You love without discrimination. You love outside the law. You love outside the law. You pity. Your eyes shall not pity. You didn't hear? Your eyes shall not pity. You didn't hear? If God had pitied Satan and left him in heaven, could there have been the earth? If God had pitied Satan and left him in heaven, could heaven have been at peace? Could heaven have been at peace? You want to pity sinners. People, the devil hired to come and spoil the war. You are pitying them. Your soul will go for it. That's what the Lord tell, told Ahab. That is what the Lord tell, told Ahab. A man I have, I have destined to judgment. A man I have destined to death. You saved him. Your soul will go for him. Your people will go for his people. God of judgment. God of judgment. Serve him with fear. With terror. The devil trembles to hear his name. Telling you, that's the world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. The Bible tells us from verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily as absent in the body, but present in the spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that had, done, had so done this deed, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lamb? Put out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lamb as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the, the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the, the living, unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you. Not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother. Be a fornicator. A, or covetous. Or an idolater. Or a railer. Or a drunkard. Or an extortioner. With such an one not to eat. For what have I to do. To judge them also that are without. Do ye not judge them that are within. But them that are without. God judges. Therefore, put away from among you yourselves that wicked person. Wicked because he's bringing doom to the church. Wicked because he wants to leaven the church. It's a sinner. He's not ready to repent. Not ready. Not ready to repent. Not ready to accept rebuke. Not ready to accept correction. Then why are you keeping him? What's the hope? What's the hope? What's the hope? What is the hope? Remove him. That chicken has caught flu. Didn't you see it coughing? You are leaving it there. 
all your chicken will catch that sickness. All the pen, the chicken will catch that sickness. One has caught it. Quickly remove it. That is what the Lord is saying. To save the rest. And you are pardoning people with various sins. The Lord will even reveal to you in Revelation, this one is a witch, a wizard. This one is a witch. And you know practically. You are sure. You don't report it. You say nothing. Where will you find the church? Give that witch a time. Except by the grace of God. There shall be church no longer. Everybody should go to hell. Do they know God? Are they here to serve God? If they are here for God, why not repentance for 20 years? If they are here for God, why not repentance for 10 years? If they are here for God, which message are they waiting for to hear? Which message? Who will come and preach it now? Who will preach it now? Are they not smelling? Are they not smoking? Is there smoke not covering everywhere? Are they not sending people away? Let's do justice. Let's do justice. Let's pray. God will give us wisdom for execution. I'm saying the truth. I say the truth in Christ and I lie not. I'm a preacher of righteousness. A preacher of truth. You can't love me without righteousness. Which love is that? All my messages. People testify. But you are testifying in lies. Your testimony is a lie because you have never changed. You have never repented. How could you still be a thief? Still stealing from the government? How could you still be a fornicator, an overseer, committing immorality? This is dirty to hear. Dirty. And you're hiding it. You're not running forward to say, I made a mistake. Oh, the devil double crossed me. So that we sympathize together. We will pray for you. We will fight that spirit together. We will do all. Because you are a soldier. Over here, you are a soldier. You are just wounded in the war. We will cure you. So we continue to fight together. You didn't do it. You didn't reveal yourself. Are you not an enemy? Do you know what effect that has in the church? Do you know what effect that has upon our lives? Upon us? Upon the preacher? Therefore, the Lord says, if you discover such an unrepentant person, have nothing to do with him. Don't have anything to do with him. No, not to eat. You people that the Lord cast people out, and you are going to visit them. He drove them out, witches and wizards, and they are your friends. With friends, and you say you are not a witch. Who told you? You say you are not a wizard, but you are a friend to a witch. Your friend to a wizard. The one that has been driven away. According to this world. Where are you? God is not with you. God has rejected you. You are not keeping his commandment. You are not keeping his word. You are careless. You are careless. You don't respect yourself. You don't respect heaven. You don't respect God. You don't respect his word. You are not part of him. You are not part of him. You are not giving chance for him to reprove the other person by shame, by disgrace, so that he can repent and come back to God. You are not giving him chance. So you are enemy. That's God talking. Hey, I want to serve him. Uh, you think it's everybody that will serve those ones? You think it's everyone? It's not everyone. Come, can they send you to Boko Haram place? You now, can you go there? I said, you want to deliver Nigeria? And he said, go to Boko Haram. You will run. He said, since my mother born me, I've never, <laughs> I've never faced those type of people. Which weapon? Me who don't even know how to shoot. There are people, categories of sinners. You can't be the one to go there. God knows. You won't survive it. If a brother is overtaken in the fall, you that will go to restore him, mind yourself. Lest even thou too should be taken. So mind yourself. 
If you are not strong to do it, withdraw. If you are not strong to do it, you are not moved to do it, don't do it. There are people that can do it. God prepared them so. So that's why. Now, reasons for God's judgment because of his love for his children. God judges because of his love for his children. In Revelation chapter 3, yes, because of his love for his children. Verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. The mother beats the child because he wants the child to behave well. But motherless children suffer from the hand of Satan because nobody rebukes them. Nobody beats them. Nobody says, don't do this. Don't go here. Nobody says. Fatherless children. Nobody says. Nobody. So life is difficult for them. They become a nuisance to society. But a son, you want him to perform well, you rebuke him, you beat him, you chastise him. That's what God says. It's his love. Yes. Yeah. Reason for his discipline. To make them partakers of his holiness. The reason why he's judging you is to make you partaker of his holiness. Hebrews chapter 12. I read from verse 5. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 5. Yes. Yeah. The Bible tells us, As ye have forgotten the exhortation, and ye have forgotten the exhortation, which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor fain when thou art rebuked of him. How does the Lord chasten? He can do it himself. He can bring sickness upon you. He can bring failures upon you. He can bring demotion upon you. He can bring anything. It is to change you. It is to deliver you. He made Nebuchadnezzar to become an animal for seven years until he came to his understanding, to his senses, that the most high ruler reigned in the kingdoms of men, in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he wills. He can use any method to humble your pride, to chastise you for being fraudulent, for being treacherous, for, for oppressive, for being oppressive over others. The Lord has other ways to do. Yes. So he's doing that, that which I see not. Teach thou me. That should be your prayer. If I've done iniquity, I should do no more. If ye endure chastening, I mean, for verse 6, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Don't say, I love this boy so much. I love this child so much. He's my only child. So you won't beat him. No. Beat every person. Including your only son. Your only daughter. Beat every son. Because the Lord said, for what child does God have that he does not chasten? And if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. If nobody will correct you, nobody will rebuke you. That's why you say, I don't want to even show myself there. I don't want anybody to observe that type of cloth. Uh, your cloth is like this. And uh, your face is, you are, you are using uh, uh, bleaching cream. I'm a bleaching, bleaching uh, cream on your head, on your face, and your hair is like this. And see, this thing is too tight. Your buttocks are showing. And hey, this is my chest. Hey, my I don't want. Then you're a bastard. Nobody should correct you. Nobody should rebuke you. You're a bastard, not born again. You, you don't know God. Otherwise, you will want to be perfect. Be a perfect. Even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Why are you refusing correction? Why are you angry? When a kind-hearted person was moved by God to tell you, Sister, this, your cloth is shining out of these uh, stones 
and they're disturbing the environment. Don't wear them again. Say, uh huh. Who make it the judge over me? Who make it the? I'm sure that man that challenged Moses, that man that sent Moses out of Egypt, I said, Who make it the? That man didn't prosper. That man, I'm sure he's in hell now. That man, wicked man, that didn't want correction. Evil man, that want to be oppressing others, they should not rebuke him. So, the Bible says, if you endure chastening, God delayed with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, where of all are partakers, then, Ye, are ye bastards and not sons? Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. That we might be partakers of his holiness. That we might be partakers of his holiness. That's why he's chastening you. That's why he's rebuking you, whether publicly or privately, or whichever way he chooses to do it, is to bring you to holiness. Sometimes you need a public rebuke because this thing has entered into your blood. You need public rebuke to wake up. So whichever way the Lord chooses it, submit to it so that you will live, so you can partake of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. It's hard, it's shameful to call your name. Hey, this person has committed adultery. Ah, this person is practicing witchcraft. Ah, this person. It's very shameful, but tomorrow will be good to you if you endure. Tomorrow, glory will come to you. Was not Jesus crucified in nakedness? Is he not the Lord of heaven and the earth now? Mind not your shame. Glory will follow you. God knows how to comfort you. So, reason for God's judgment to make them partakers of his holiness. Number three, to deliver them from eternal death if they repent. To deliver them from eternal death if they repent. Look at it in 1 Corinthians. I read chapter 11, verse 29 to 32. 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 29. The Bible tells us this. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not designing the lost body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we should, would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. You take Holy Communion anyhow, sinner. You now take it anyhow, despising the glory of the Lord. Despising the body of Christ. Just because you want to protect your shame and do your hypocrisy originally. The Lord is saying, I judge those who do it. Some get sick. Some get weakness of life. Weakness. Because they ate it unworthily. They are not worthy to eat it. Some even die as an example. I do this to serve others. I, if it is you, just, I just gave you sickness, I gave you weakness. It is to make you deliver yourself from eternal death. That's why I punished you. But how many of you know the judgment of Partaking in Holy Communion, in adultery, in witchcraft, in thievery, in all kinds. How many of you know the danger? It's because your eyes are blind. You're not in the light. So that is how it is. Reason for God's judgment. Yes. To show God's truth, justice, and power over his human creatures. In the book of Exodus, chapter 9, verse 16. Exodus, chapter 9. I read verse 16. 
the Bible tells us here saying, and in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up to, for, to show in thee my power and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. That's what he was telling Pharaoh. You are stubborn. <laughs> I love. I said, yes. Yes. I allowed Egypt to bring out a stubborn king so that when I am taking my children out, I know stubborn king will normally resist. Then I will show my power that I'm not a man. I'm the creator. I will demonstrate my power for all nations to know that there's a God in heaven. So judgment comes to demonstrate his power. You feel proud. You feel I am a witch. I am a wizard of authority. I am known all over the world. Who can escape from my hand? The Lord says, yes. I allowed you to go gradually to come to that point because when I deal with you, the whole world shall hear and they shall know that here am I. I am God. I'm no man. I demonstrate my power over you. I allowed you to grow. I allowed you to allow them to choose you as the head witchcraft because I want somebody that when I deal with him, the world will hear it. Others will hear it. My name shall be called worldwide. My name shall be feared. That's what he said. To show forth his power. To demonstrate his justice. That others should be comforted. Because to comfort others, the Lord must judge their enemies. To show that he's a God of truth, he must judge the wicked and justify the innocent. To show that he is a shepherd of the sheep, he must Take away the prey from the mouth of the terrible. He must. That shows he's a ter- he and judge the terrible. That is it. That's why God judges. That's what God judges. Will he leave you to be oppressing that man? Will he leave you to be destroying that family? Are they not crying to him? Is there no God in heaven that must hear them? Is he not patient enough? Is there no a time patience can be over? He will judge you. He will deal with you. He will break your bone. He will break you down. That others should know there is a God that knows justice and judgment. He's a God of judgment. You did it secretly. He will do it openly. So that you yourself can see how much you have been deceived to be the ultimate. So that you yourself can see valuelessness in Satan and respect God. That's where he judges. The God of truth. The God of justice. Why? That others may hear and learn not to do such evil. Others should hear and learn not to do such evil. Yes, to cleanse away evil that people will not do it again. When they see. Yes. To prepare you for eternal judgment. If you die, hell. Eternal judgment. Of fire. Prepare you for it. If he gave you a blow and you don't answer, say, I repent, then he will prepare to send you to hell. The wicked shall be, con- shall be cast into hell and all nations that forget God. So, have you seen our God now? The one side of God is mercy. The other side of God is judgment. The one side of God is grace. The other side of God is truth. The one side of God is love. The other side of God is punishment. Choose. Which side do you belong to? Why don't you choose God? Why don't you choose humility? Why don't you choose truth? 
What pays you to suffer me hypocrisy? Which company employed you to come and do deceit in the, in the presence of God? Which power deceived you to come here that you will succeed? You didn't hear what the Lord said, you will not succeed here. You didn't hear what the Lord said, witches and wizards shall not make it here. He will visit them. This is your bus stop. Wickedness shall put an end, but shall be ended here because of judgment. The Lord is still coming on the way. The Lord is still coming. He's still dealing with mercy. He's a God of mercy that doesn't want his people to perish. Take advantage of mercy and drop your iniquity. Drop the weak points of evil that you have carried. All this struggling against Pastor Rica, Sister Linda, that you are doing, drop it. The Lord will deal with you and give you, make you ashamed in the world. He will limit your time to exist. If you affect Pastor Rica, affect Sister Linda, who will preach the gospel? Who told you that your Satan is the one that made the world? Who told you that you should make the death of Jesus on the cross? Eventing creatures of Jesus will not serve his master, will not serve her master, but will be joining with a stubborn, stubborn being and resist him. You will suffer it. God will suffer you and hell shall end you up. Rise up upon your feet and repent of your ways. Rise up and repent of your ways. The wicked shall be turned to hell. You don't know that God is a God of judgment? Is it because he's quiet? Who is Satan? Who is he? Have we not been preaching for all this while? Has he overcome the true church? Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not overtake it. The gates of hell shall not overcome it. Who told you that Satan can catch any righteous man? Nobody can stand. Who told you? Abraham made it to heaven. Isaac made it to heaven. Jacob made it to heaven. Moses made it to heaven. Come to the New Testament. God made his apostles. Paul is there. Peter is there. John is there. Yes, righteous women like Sarah. They are there in heaven. Dokas. They are there. Tabitha. Mary. They are there. Who told you that Satan will prevent everybody? Who told you that Satan will take over everybody? That you are thinking that we must sin. We must backslide. The Lord will burn you up alive. Do your, the work of God with purity. Fear God. You are alone in that place. Fear God. You don't have a close supervision. Fear God. You are not doing evangelism in the house of God. You are not doing something to bring more people. You are scattering them. Hmm. The wisdom of God is what keeps you going. For a time. Confess and repent. There's still mercy. Reject the devil. Tell him you're not for him. You will not serve him again. You will not follow him. You will not do the assignment he gave you. <laughs>